Hi everyone, my name is Ibrahim. I work as an internal medicine trainee in the NHS. In this video today, we're going to talk about what makes you eligible and the entire process of application for two-year foundation program in the United Kingdom. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. In the previous video, Dr. Ibris have discussed about uh, what, what is United Kingdom Foundation program, the whole structure of it and how much you get paid and all the other stuff. In this video, we are going to elaborate more on the eligibility criteria of uh, United Kingdom Foundation program and we are going to draw a timeline uh, for two case studies for two medical students uh, depending on their situations what would be the timeline for the entire year for them to submit their application and when and how everything can be done. So foundation program in the United Kingdom is basically another name for medical internship. It is a two-year program and international medical graduates who graduate from a non-UK medical school can also apply for this. Uh, but the application is a bit different than the other pathways that you can obtain uh, after doing internship and getting full GMC registration. So this pathway is only for those uh, who have not done any internship elsewhere uh, in the world and they want to do internship which is foundation program in the UK. This entire video is based on the eligibility applicant guidance which was published for this year's foundation program is 2021 which I mean everything has already been settled and done uh, but for the next year's eligibility applicant guidance hasn't been published yet so I would advise if you're uh, wanting to apply uh, whichever year, uh, it's highly advisable to just follow the applicant guidance for that specific year. So 2021 guidance, that means it's for uh, the foundation program, which will start at 2021. And the application and everything happens in the earlier year. So the application has already been closed and done. That's why uh, this is not valid anymore. But the process will not be dissimilar. But if you're watching this video uh, at a later date, please follow the latest applicant guidance uh, which will contain all the details. So what makes you ineligible for UKFP? I think that's the, the first question because a lot of um, aspirants may get filtered out and a lot of medical students may think about doing or taking this path after knowing this. So uh, the only thing actually that makes you ineligible if you have done some sort of internship which makes you eligible to apply for full GMC registration at the start of UKFP. So you see, the start of UKFP is in August every year. So by August next year, if you have completed your internship, that means you are actually eligible to apply for full GMC registration. If you had taken all the PLAB exams, that means you are not eligible to apply for this path. But if you're like in the middle of your internship, which you'll not complete your internship, but you want to go for UK's internship at like that start, then you can probably take this path and think about it. But if you have already completed internship, I think the other pathway that you can think about other than UKFP is F2 standalone program. So the application process is also run by UKFPO. That's a completely another discussion. We have related articles uh, and even guidance about how to attend the interview for F2 standalone program in our website. Uh, the, links would be in the description box be sure to check it out if you're interested in taking enough to stand alone but if you want to join ukfp you cannot have your full uh, internship completed what are the other eligibility criteria obviously you have to have a valid medical degree by gmc uh, by the start of ukfp so you don't have to be a graduate to apply for ukfp rather you'd have to be a graduate by the start of ukfp which is in august uh, whichever year you're planning to uh, you have to expect to obtain or have obtained provisional GMC registration by the start of UKFP. Again, so you don't have to have PLAB 1 and PLAB 2 done to apply for it, but uh, before you start your UKFP, you have to have them completed. You have to have the written approval from your medical school dean to apply for UKFP. This is a must to have. There would be a dean statement 
available on UKFP website uh, for that specific year, like the eligibility applicant guidance, you'll have to download that and get it signed by your medical school dean. You have to have demonstrable English language skills, which can be proven by exams like IELTS or OET. Or if your country is an English speaking country where the patients um, mainly speaks in English, uh, your dean can sign you off from that as well, that 75% of the interaction and your education, everything and examination was in English. In that case, you may not have to take IELTS or AT. And you have to have qualified medical school within two years of the start of EKFP. If you have that qualified, then, I mean, it's not that you cannot apply for EKFP if you have qualified two years prior. Because if you had qualified for medical school two years prior to the start of UKFP, you may have to take a test called National Clinical Assessment, which is an extra test other than all the tests you have to take. But if you have graduated within the two years of starting the UKFP, you may not have to take this test. So going back to prove this eligibility criteria, what, what papers do you need? You need the degree or a dean's letter if you don't have the certificate at hand. Uh, your medical school dean can sign you off a letter saying that uh, you have passed the exams but you don't have the certificate. Uh, you have to have completed the PLABS during the whole process before the start of UKFP to obtain GMC provisional registration. You have to have the dean's statement signed and for English language skills you can either provide dean's statement if that's applicable for you or you can provide IELTS or OAT report form which have to be ready by the time you apply for UKFP. So eligibility application is an extra step for some people, uh, mainly the people, mainly the medical students who have graduated outside of um, uh, UK medical school. Uh, and this is a separate window uh, and you have to apply for this. Uh, so it consists of an online application and you're submitting uh, like, you know, supporting documentation to prove your eligibility and uh, you will be allowed to apply in the national application round where all the UK medical students are also applying uh, once you're found eligible to apply. So there could be two outcomes, either you're found eligible completely or you're found eligible with conditions. The conditions may be like you have to pass uh, a clinical assessment exam, but either of these two would allow you to apply for the national application round, which is also an online application. So the cases for which you have to apply for eligibility application is if you are a student or a graduate from a non-UK medical school, or if you are a non-UK or settled national, non-settled national, studying in a UK medical degree at a campus outside the UK. But if you're actually studying in UK medical school inside UK, even if you're non-national, you don't have to submit an eligibility application because your medical school in the UK will nominate you for uh, this foundation application. But if you are a graduate from a non-UK medical school or a medical school outside UK, which is a UK medical school, but you are a non-national, then you have to apply for this eligibility application. So the whole process has basically two steps. Uh, one is the online eligibility application and the second one is supporting uh, document supplement. This is all done in, uh, in a website, which is called Oriel, uh, which we'll come to later on. Uh, and this entire process actually starts in late July to early September for the UKFP training, which will start next year, August. So this is a very crucial uh, time to remember, because if you miss this spot after September, I think 2nd or 3rd September was latest date last year, you cannot apply for eligibility, thus miss the entire window of uh, the whole process. So very important timeline in the calendar. Late July to early September is the eligibility application window. So the all eligibility application, online eligibility application is done in Oriel website. Oriel website is Oriel 2, it's the second version. And you see the entire process is explained step by step. And you have to go to this EK Foundation program and make your eligibility application. The details that you will need for online application is you have to have your personal details, your name, your like you know um, uh, passport and all the other details, uh, information about your primary medical school, where did you graduate or when do you intend to graduate and all the other stuff if you haven't graduated yet, uh, and information about your English language skills. So you have to have uh, completed your English language skills by the time you apply for this eligibility. So you see your PLAB 1, PLAB 2, nothing is needed to apply for UKFP. Uh, but you have to have them passed before you start uh, your United Kingdom Foundation program in the next year. So in the, for the application process, 
you don't need them. You just need your primary medical qualification, uh, either completed or even not completed. But you have to have the plan ahead, uh, whether you can apply and get all this done, uh, which we will discuss in the next few slides. So supporting documents, you'll need your passport, your dean statement, your degree certificate or dean's letter if uh, the certificate is not available or valid or IELTS or We put an asterisk there because if you are from that country that uh, you have more than 75% interaction with patients in English, then your IELTS and OAT is not needed. You can just mention that in the dean's letter and uh, uh, you're exempted from it. Uh, but in, it, it's, it's really not possible for a medical student to have uh, more than 75% interaction in non-English speaking country. So English language skills for EKFP, this is this is one of the one of the biggest hurdles I'd say uh, to take this path because the requirement for this is a bit higher than what is the requirement for general GMC registration. Uh, if you have to take IELTS, the minimum score is 7.5 in each domain uh, uh, and for OET the minimum score is 400. It is grade B, but the grade B actually starts from a bit lower than that, I think 340 or 50, but you have to score minimum 400 in each domain, which is equivalent to IELTS 7.5. So the score required for UKFP is a bit higher uh, than what it is required to get GM's registration um, normally via PLAP pathway. So as I said earlier, uh, Dean's statement can also be uh, used to provide uh, your English language proficiency. But as you can see, uh, apart from getting your entire primary medical qualification undertaken in English and examined in English, you also have to have this clause signed, which is probably not possible if you are not dealing with English speaking patients. So let's do two case studies for UKFP application. We'll talk about two scenarios for medical students and we will plan their UKFP application process. And I think uh, with this, uh, when we discuss in these two scenarios, it will be easier for you to plan your application process as well if you're a third year, fourth year or fifth year medical student. So for this first case, we have Nazir, who is a fifth year medical student and his final professional exam will be held in February 2022. He hopes to get results and hopefully pass by May 2022. And he wants to apply for UKFP. So what would be his entire pathway? So if you draw a calendar like this, uh, note that the calendar is 2022 and Eligibility application window, as we know, it starts from late July to early September and the national application window is mid-October to early November. So you see, in this entire pathway, he has gotten his past results in May. Uh, so he has to have his IELTS or OAT complete if he requires it by August because he has to submit that IELTS or OAT for this eligibility application. And by July, he have to get he ha he has to get his all paperwork ready, like dean's statement and dean's letter and everything necessary. And when the eligibility application window opens, he can with all the paperwork he can actually submit this eligibility application. And if he is found eligible, then he can go and uh, apply for national application window in October. But he also have to think about booking your PLAB, booking his PLAB one exam because the latest date he can take PLAB one is November because later than that there will be no time for taking PLAB 1 further uh, because he ha have to complete PLAB 2 by the time uh, it's March or April. So if for, for him maybe clinical assessment would, no, would not be necessary because he just passed uh, less than a year before he starts, uh, I mean just about a year or three months before his UKFP starts. So this clinical assessment may not be necessary for him, but it's it's all dependence on the eligibility application. And you see in the process, he'll have to take SJT first window would be in December after he has taken his PLAB 1. In January, he will get his PLAB 1 result, but also January, there is another window of taking SJT, so another exam that you have to take, which is called situational judgment test. So he has two windows to take it. Uh, SJT is completely free and it's taken online these days as well. Uh, and you will be allowed to book an SJT test uh, once you have applied and like, you know, on the national allocation and you're given an option to book. Uh, and you see from March and April time, you have the time to take PLAP 2. If you have already completed these steps and 
taking the process of UK application, it is known that GMC may uh, allow you to take PLAP2 uh, or give, in, give you priority to take PLAP2 in earlier dates than everyone else. So you have to have your GMC provisional registration application done by uh, May. And if everything is fine, if you're offered a post and all the other, everything works, you'll get a visa and you'll apply for a working visa to start UKFP in August. So let's go for a second case where the graduation date is a bit different. Here we have Shushma, who is a fourth year medical student. Her final professional exam will be held in September 2022, and he, she hopes to get results by December 2022. So note the year 2022, and as you can see, her PMQ past results will be in December of that year. So we know the eligibility application window opens in this time, and the national application window opens in this time. You see, her earliest, as I said previously, the latest you can take PLAB 1 is in November. But if she graduates in December or have the final exam in December, it will not be possible for her to book a PLAB 1 in November at all. Because to book PLAB 1, you have to have completed your final medical exams. So for Shushma, she cannot apply for UKFPO, which will start in 2023. She'll have to go for next year. So she has this entire more than six months to actually plan and take IELTS or OAT, or if there is PLAB exams to be taken later on, she can take PLAB exams and clear and keep everything ready to start UKFP in 2024. So as you can see, the whole process does again in 2023. By August, she'll have to have completed her IELTS or OAT, paperwork ready, apply for eligibility application, and then when a national application window opens, apply for there, this is the latest of that year. So if she passes PLAB 1 in March or June, it's 100% okay. If she has already completed PLAB 2 by the time, that's also fine. Uh, but this is the latest she have to take PLAB 1. Again, clinical assessment, if it's uh, mandated in the eligibility application with condition, then she'll have to take it. Otherwise, she might not have to take it. Uh, again, December is the first SJT window. And in the next year, 2024, January will be the second SGT window. Again, she has the latest uh, March and April to pass PLAB 2, GMC provisional registration by May, and everything falls into place to start UKFP in 2024. So the key summaries from this <laughs> elaborate case studies and application uh, process of United Kingdom Foundation program, which is a two-year program. The first thing, if you pass final exams before November, you can target UKFP for the next year. You see, if you pass in May or June, you can actually think about applying for UKFP for the next year. You have to have completed IELTS or OAT with required score before or on August of the application year. So application year and starting year. If the starting year is 2023, the application year is 2022. So by August, because August is the eligibility application window, uh, from late July to start September. So in August, you have to have completed your IELTS and OAT with required score. You have to start thinking about putting your eligibility application together, like, you know, going for Dean's statement, getting it signed, um, and your uh, other bits and pieces like your overseas degree conversion and all the other stuff. You have to put it together uh, for May and June time before you, the eligibility application window happens. The major amount of funding that you will require is actually in January if you have passed PLAB 1 in November because you have to book your PLAB 2 during that time and obviously during March and April time. I, I, I state this because I think funding is, is a very important thing to consider about whole process and in our next video we will uh, explore about what the cost would be. The cost is not actually the different for the entire PLAB pathway. You'll have to have uh, like a few things uh, different than uh, the whole process because you'll, you'll have to take PLAB even if you have taken other pathway to get registration. But for this process, the application and everything doesn't cost anything. Even SJT doesn't cost anything. So the process doesn't cost any that different from the normal pathway of PLAB. Uh, but it's, it's important to know when you need the money most. 
There you have it, the entire eligibility application process and a complete timeline of how you can think about applying for UKFP. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. We'll, we're always happy to answer. Keep an eye out for the next video where we will continue to discuss more about the United Kingdom Foundation program. If you have not already, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.